and welcome to Code Slicing. Or should I say, a masterclass in doing the photos icon in five minutes. Now we do hit a roadblock at about the halfway point, but don't worry, we get through it in the end. And we're not even gonna use layout guides for this one. Yeah, it's quite incredible. Uh, we're gonna do this in a relatively native manner. Uh, however, I am going to be dipping in and out of the Pure Swift UI extensions to make things a bit clearer. With that being said, I think it's time I stopped the talking and got on with the coding and talking. Right, here we are, starting off as we usually do. And I'm going to jump straight into this and start defining colors because there are quite a few. And because I don't want to get accused of cheating, I'm going to start the clock right now and get defining them. So let's get going. Private let colors, which is an array of colors. And I'm going to use the RGB8 extension from Pure Swift UI to make this a bit cleaner here. Okay, so while my counterpart from the past bashes away on the keyboard like a trained monkey, I'm going to explain how these colors are going to work. See, it turns out that each petal is not a single color, but a gradient. Furthermore, the inner color for each petal is the same as the outer color of the next petal, going clockwise. So by just using eight colors, we can define all the gradients in all the petals using an algorithm that he'll talk about later on in the episode. Okay. It looks like he's just about finished, so I'll hand you back to him and enjoy the rest of the show. Right, let's stop the clock and resume the preview so we can see what we're going to be doing. And now the colors are defined, I'm going to add a geometry reader, as I like to do, and I'm going to use it to define the dimensions of the petals as multiples of the icon size. So resume that clock. Place all this with the geometry reader. First thing is the petal height which is 0 0.41 times the width. And then we have the petal width, which is 0 0.27 times the width. And the petal offset, which is the petal height, times minus 0 0.565. And these are all going in a Z stack. First thing we need is a rounded rectangle of 20% of the width for the corner radius. And we can fill that with white. And then we just loop around our petals. Colors, count, index, in. Each petal is a capsule, which we're going to fill with a linear gradient where the first color is the color at the current index. And the second color is the index plus one modulus with the number of colors. And we're going to send that to the bottom. Let's stop the clock because I think that requires a bit of explanation. As my future self probably explained while I was defining the colors, we are relying on the fact that the inner color of each petal is equal to the outer color of the next petal. If we keep adding one to the index as we go round, we are going to run into trouble when we come to the last petal. And that is because we have eight colors and the second color in the last gradient is going to be requesting the color at index eight. And since that's zero base, it is actually the ninth color, which doesn't exist. This of course would throw a bounds exception, but we are using the remainder operator here and eight divided by eight as a remainder of zero. So instead of requesting an index outside the bounds of the array, we loop around and the inner color of the last petal ends up being the outer color of the first petal, just the way we want it. And now all we need to do is give these petals a frame, offset them, rotate them, and give them a blend mode. So restart that clock. We'll give each one a frame with the petal width and the petal height. We offset them by the petal offset and we rotate by 45 degrees times the index. And then we give it a blend mode of multiply. And there we are, all done, all finished. We can all go home. Let's give ourselves a collective pat on the back for being so clever. Look at that, under two and a half minutes. That's got to be a record. Except for the fact that unfortunately, we're not quite done because there's a problem. Can you see it? You have to look quite closely. The top left intersection of petals is not right. The blend mode's right, the colors are right, they are blending exactly as they should be. And Apple didn't think that looked good enough, did they? 
So they went in and they changed it. They cheated. In other words, we've got to cheat in order to recreate that design. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to do that by exploiting the even odd fill style of true for this. So in the same shape, we're going to have a background and we're going to have two overlapping circles. And then using that fill style, we will end up with the insert that we need. We'll deal with getting rid of the background a bit later on. So down here, we're going to create our shape called insert. And this is going to take an offset and a radius. So let's go up here and let's comment this out, resume, and then go back to our shape and we can keep defining it. First thing we do is put on a, a rectangle uh, for the whole thing. And we're going to put two circles on. The origin of the first one, rect center with a y offset of offset. The radius is the radius. And then we can just duplicate that and change that to x offset. For this insert, we need the offset and the radius. Well, the radius is easy, that's just half the petal width. But the offset is a little trickier because we don't have a capsule on our hands here that we're offsetting. We're offsetting a circle which has to sit nicely at the bottom of the capsule. So the way that works is we're going to take the petal offset and to that we're going to add half the height and then we're going to subtract the radius of the insert circle. Remember, going up the screen is negative in the y axis. All right, and that looks like this. That the insert radius is simply the petal width times 0 0.5. And the insert offset is the petal offset plus the petal height times 0 0.5 minus the insert radius. Let me give ourselves a bit more room. Insert offset is equal to the insert offset. Of course, the radius is the insert radius. Fill color black, the style with EO fill equal to true. Okay, stop the clock. What we're going to do next is we're going to have to mask it. Because at the moment, what you can see is black all around and black for the insert. And we just want the black for the insert. We've had to put that black background on it in order for the even odd fill style to work here to give us black where the insert is. But what we want to do is mask this shape so we only get that black insert. And we can do that by using a conditional as a property in the shape that is going to allow us to define a shape without the background that we can use for a mask. So that's very easy to do. We add an is mask property equal to false. We use it. If we're not a mask, then we put the background in and then we use the mask here. Mask will take the original, stick it there, and we'll say his mask is true. Then we resume, and that's the way you do it. But not quite, because I don't know if you can see this very well on the screen capture, but we've got some bleed here in our mask, all right? It's not perfect. And if you're wondering if using anti-aliased in the fill style would help in this situation, unfortunately it won't. But there is a brute force approach we can use for the mask by passing in a radius slightly less than the radius of the original insert shape. Insert radius minus 0.2. Now we've got our insert, we can uncomment this. And since the insert's much too strong, we set the opacity to 0.2. And now we really are done. And just to prove this is size agnostic as we usually do, Let's go down here, V stack. We'll put an H stack in as well. Copy that. We'll set the size of that one to 200. Duplicate it again. 
set the size to 50. And there we are, three beautiful and authentic looking photos icons done in five minutes, even taking into account Apple's shenanigans behind the scenes. I thank you. Well, there we are, we got there in the end. I still can't believe they cheated like that. I mean, it's so underhanded. I think what happened is they knew I was going to try this and just wanted to make it more difficult for me. That's almost certainly what happened in this case. I mean, I can't think of any other reason other than the fact that it looks better, but please, no, they wanted to mess with me, okay? So if you like my solution in the face of such insurmountable odds, don't forget to hit the like button. It helps people find the channel and keeps me very happy indeed. And if you don't want to miss the next episode, which is almost certainly probably maybe going to be brilliant, then consider subscribing and you won't. If you have any comments or your own solutions, then please post them below. But in the meantime, thanks for joining me. See you next time.